My name is Sharon Doni. Um, this is the this is a letter to my younger self. Uh, dear 16 year old Sharon, uh, you're in high school. You hate it there, but don't worry. Um, that should be the least of your worries. Life is going to throw you a curveball, but you're going to take it strongly. Um, you're going to have a child at 17 years. It may seem like the worst thing, but it will be the best thing that has ever happened to you. She will give you strength and resilience. Um, you'll be able to raise her and still go through school. Um, through her, you'll be able to find very great friends who will stick by you. Your relationship with your parents will be really great. Your mom will be your anchor. She will put her life on hold to help you raise her. Um, yeah, and you'll be a very great mom. Wasango. <laughs> Jina auna, jina utaki. Utaki. <laughs> Fidel Omusula. Yes, wasango. Wasango, <laughs> wasango. ni wewe. Bado si jimbo unaona ni tanga hivyo. Si si kwa sababu bado Fidel is one who taught me the word wasango. wasango. Do you want to yeah, people what now, wasango means? Uh, me I don't know. Mabosha <laughs> <laughs> what does wasango mean? Wasango ni banye, underwear. <laughs> You said banye. I, yeah, banye. We used to call it banye in high school when I was in Cubs and actually now that we've Wait, when up, you were where? In Cubs, that's how I know your mom. That's crazy. Exactly. So for those what? at home watching, Fidel's yeah. mom taught yeah. me Kiswahili oh in my God, that's so high school. And this is the first time I'm hearing about yeah. it. Yeah, I've told you this several days. Okay, why did that. you tell me though? <laughs> It that, that's 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 the that's actually, the problem. Yeah, that's the big, yeah. biggest problem. Okay. So, wh- what went through your mind when I yeah. first called you, or rather texted you, and was like, "Would you come onto my podcast?" Um. So, first of all, like I'm not I'm not a very vulnerable person. Mm-hmm. Um. So the whole con because I watched the show, so the whole concept was like a bit. I was just like, "Wow." Yeah. Now the things that are in my heart that I've never that I don't tell people mm-hmm. um and the struggles especially I had as a young boy, you know. Like I really I think I really struggled when I was younger because just to try and fit in and everything like that. So I was like, do I really wanna go and, and talk about that? And then I was like, you know what? Yeah. It's it's those things, it's those moments that shape you. So like ultimately I was like Okay, cool. Yeah, and how yeah. did it feel like now writing the letter? It was, ins- I think, do you know, it was overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember, so like when I was writing it, I wrote it a bit and then I just stopped and I was like... <sighs> yeah, breathe in and out. You know, so yeah, it was a bit overwhelming because I think it took me back and even, even as I was writing it, it put me in a situation where I was thinking about even now and the things I struggle with now that mm-hmm. might have been, um, might have come from that time, you know. Um, and sometimes you never realize these things, but uh, subconsciously sometimes, like even as you think about this kind of thing, mm. it, it comes to you and you realize these traumas I have and, you, you know, yeah. yeah. So that's, it, was, it wasn't easy mm-hmm. when I ended up writing almost two pages. <laughs> okay, so before we get into yeah. it, I think you can first read the letter to us. <laughs> Dear 12-year-old Fidel, um, this part of your life was not easy. You went through identity crisis, trying to fit in different places, but never got accommodated. Um, it did not help that you started school before your age mates, and so you were always the youngest in your class, and many times very impressionable. You resorted to doing things you did not even want to do just so that people could see you, and still they did not. It hurt you inside every day. You were also bullied so much for not being from as wealthy a family for not having what all the others did and for being tiny. It was painful. Um, They tore you down so many times and that affected you so much at that point in time, but you did not know what to do. Um, This among other things made you close yourself. You changed. You decided the soft exterior you had was not, was the problem, I think, yeah. Even though you were such a small kid, you decided you had to be tough to command your respect. You decided enough of the bullying, enough of the insults, enough of it all. 
you also decided you were not going to try and get people's attention, but they, that they will try to get yours. It worked, but in the process, uh, you lost a lot of yourself. A lot of what made you who you are, the kindness, uh, the vulnerability, it was a bad exchange, but an, ex an exchange that felt necessary at that time. And you lived that way for a couple of years. Um, you got what you wanted at that point, but deep down you always knew that was not who you were. It was just a front to get something you desperately desired. And as much as you were gaining it, each passing day you were losing more of you. You fooled yourself almost into believing that was who you were, and why not for your parents' prayers, you would probably be on a very different path from the one you are on now, all in the name of wanting strangers' acceptance. Some of the things you lost are things you struggle with even today, the vulnerability especially. But I am older now, and I understand a lot more than I did back then, and so I am a work in progress. I do not have regrets really because I believe experiences are what have shaped me to be the man that I am today. However, there are things I wish I knew back then at 12. First thing is you were enough. Um, despite the world uh, making you feel, this, despite what the world made you feel, however small they made you feel, you were enough. They beat on you to validate themselves. It had nothing to do with the amazing young boy that you are. You were just an easy target, and that is all. Secondly, there were people who loved you so much, you just chose to focus on those uh, that did not. Those whose validation you thought you needed. You had so many people around you who loved you and were rooting for you. You should have put your energy towards those people and not focus on those who made you feel inferior. Thirdly, you did not have to change yourself for people's acceptance. For a while, you lived a lie, and as much as it got you the acceptance, deep down you knew the truth. They accepted you, but you did not accept yourself. That was not who you were. Be you and be proud of yourself and where you are from. Um, that leads me to my last point. You were never bothered about where you came from until they started mentioning it and you started to, feel, to get discontent. Your parents worked so hard to afford opportunities for you that they never had, and they are definitely people who, uh, and definitely there are people who are better off. There always will be, trust me, but always be content. Dad and mom did so much for you, sacrificed so much, and that is what matters. They were always there for you and always will be. That will never change. So let no one ever make you feel like where you came from is not enough. All these things are taking a uh, while, even at the age I'm hard to fix. They really are. I'm super flawed still, and for the longest time, I did not realize how much that childhood trauma affected me, but eventually, I know I'll figure it out. Despite everything, I am still doing great things, learning and unlearning so many things about myself every day. The most amazing thing is that I am living my dream. Remember you saying how you just wanted to be an entertainer? Well, we did it, so that's a win. Anyway, thank you for who you were, regardless, and all the lessons. I love you, little man. Love, older Fidel. No. So, 12 year old yeah. Fidel. 12 year old Fidel is younger than everyone yeah. in his class, yeah. smaller than everyone. Yeah. Um, you feel, or rather, even from your letter, it sounds like you know that everyone else is more well off than yeah. you guys are, yeah. and you're still struggling to fit in. Yeah. How old were you um, when you joined school? So I started school at three, mm -hmm. and most people join school at like four. Um, so like, my whole life I've always been the youngest person in mm -hmm. every class I've been to. Um, and in, I think in uni people never, not uni, in, in high school people never knew because um, it was those ones for like I didn't want I didn't want that anymore. The, you know, you know, it's it's not like as present, but people treat you differently when they know you're younger. You know, mm -hmm. you say something and it's like ah, I to you yeah. You know, so it was always like that. And I remember, so I, I used to go to a school called Saint Anna's, um, and then I left Saint Anna's and went to Gilgil Hills because I was just done um, with how people were treating me. So when I went to Gilgil, I just lied to everyone. I was like, no, even me, yeah, I'm, I'm 14. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
Um, yeah, I've always just been the youngest guy in, in school mm-hmm. for some reason, and I, did, I didn't like it at all. Yeah. yeah. Now, apart from being younger, you yeah. are also physically yeah, the smallest. Yeah, very small. And it is so hard yeah. to picture Fidel being yeah. tiny. Fidel, yeah. Fidel, Uyu, yeah. Wasango, wa Misuli, Miraba, Minne, <laughs> 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 Misuli, Tinginya. Mm. It's so hard to imagine yeah. Fidel being tiny. Yeah. Um, how did this affect you? Um, so, I never felt like I was... Let me say even a man enough. Like I always looked at my peers and I'm like, I'm gonna miss it grow. Mm-hmm. You know. And you see, at that time you d- you don't even realize these guys are actually older. So most of them are growing uh before you, you actually grow. So I yeah. was always like way behind. What's one about Andevu? Manzina Shindu is it was not happy. When I get like um and I was really, really small. I'll, I think the, the the picture of me at top is there. Um, as a tiny a boy with skinny, skinny hands and skinny legs, um, I wanted to do sports. So when people uh, played football, I was always mm-hmm. picked last. Na niki chaguliwa na kwa goalkeeper. Penye yani si na impact kwa game. You post ni kubwa wa kieka ini wana kunam se ata do anything. Um, yeah, so b- that being small affected me in the sense that I, I was always picked last for everything. People used to beat on me a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Like, we look at beat on our same time and go to for no reason. We go to the Allah for a checker because now feel love that's a certain our friends. Yeah. This is a bond. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So there's that. Um. And then I just used to wonder, like, is it ever gonna happen for me? You know, you're like, will I ever grow past this? And girls used to make fun of me a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think, especially when you're starting to hit the when you're nearing the puberty and you're starting to feel things about girls and then mm. now the girls are like oh. they wanna oh. <laughs> yeah, it was tough yeah. yeah it's actually interesting you say this because yeah. we had mike on the show previously yeah. and yeah. he was also small like yeah. as he grew up yeah. and you also mentioned that it really affected me and i think yeah. there's a difference between like girls and guys when they were growing yeah. up because me i've always been easy and it's never bothered yeah you. it's yeah. never bothered me and actually I never even noticed. Me, I just thought, okay, yeah, like you're taller than me, yeah, but it's it's it's, it's, it's yeah. a thing, yeah. And but you see the the thing, and even now, like mm-hmm. the thing about men, and and I'm, I know a lot of times people tell us, um, it's ladies who are looked at like physically that their appearance and all that, but men are looked at physically, just maybe not at the, your face as much, but it's like even now. How mm-hmm. many people will be like uh, six, men who are below six feet? Yeah, like people would just come at you for no for no reason, like just because you're short or you're not built a certain way. And let me tell you, even today, I get mm-hmm. not I don't want to say intimidated, but I mean almost intimidated when people are taller and bigger than me. It's mm-hmm. like it takes you back there. <sighs> mm-hmm. I don't know, like I, I I put a certain manhood to them, like. Yeah. Like me was ready for me one every time I hit you. I don't like you're so tall, man. Yeah. Why are you that tall? Yeah. So I think for, for dudes it's just um even at that young age when you're not a certain way, when you're this when you're not as big as the rest, you don't mm-hmm. have to be the biggest, but you're not as big as the rest, you're not as tall as the rest, it feels like we we're too me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. Mm. And you also mentioned that you realized you weren't yeah. from as wealthy a family yeah. as everyone yeah. else. Um, what are some things that you were maybe seeing or were happening that made you realize this? Uh, and and this one, I think this is the thing that affected me the most. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just in school, it was in church, everywhere. Um, so as our family, um, so I grew up uh, for the most part of my childhood in Eastlands. Um, and then, so us guys moved to sites for Karen because my dad was going to school those sites. And you can imagine how the people in Karen are, you know. Mm. So you guys have come from Islando and then all of a sudden you've been thrust into Karen. You're living with people who are high and mighty in this our society. And then, so I don't, I, to be honest, I don't even know if us guys, when my bro and I were going to St. Anna's, you come out Nalipa Fiyote? But yeah, we used to uh, we'd go there, but us guys would walk to school, for example. Um, I mean, it wasn't at it too far, mm-hmm. but we'd walk to school just because the getting the bus didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, and for so I used to understand that, but now people made it seem like 
hata wanatembeanga jawana ka kitu mm-hmm. and then you know the worst thing is the bus used to pita so like as we are walking <laughs> the bus is pita and going to where us guys stay yeah. so it's going to drop neighbors of us but us guys are just there with my bro and a dude called Christian <laughs> Congolese guy we're just walking and we're not, we're not bothered until people start telling us oh ni mnatembeanga hata mna kitu your parents can't afford to put you on the bus and you know how kids are kids yeah. are brutal you know kids uh, actually very they're mean they're so brutal like they tell you these things and they they make you feel poor and then you know um when you, so where we were coming from like when our parents bought uniform it was always massive mm-hmm. clothes like you see why you buy a bag class eight. so i used to have pants i remember <laughs> in class 3 my pants were like trousers i swear shorts were like trousers yeah trousers. my shorts were like trousers yeah so and 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 guys used to make fun of me mm-hmm. and i never used to like my sweater would be the same for like two years three years and me i never got bothered but people would say it and then i just be like yeah and yeah kumbe sina I had to go to school and so after the holidays guys are talking about playstations and all the things the new games they've played that time guys I've never seen a playstation in my life mm. like me stuff na skianga me na jua computer games mm-hmm. when I get like na hizo computer games my dad is rationing them for days not just for 30 minutes mnaenda mm-hmm. mnasoma you know so like the, it was very present and then there's a time like in church I remember this girl asked, so I had gone uh, to we were doing a church concert and I went and this girl literally said to me mbona umevaivo nguo zako zina ka vibaya oh god au na nguo zingine I was like sina for real I don't this is this and, is and what the I, best. yeah what I'm dressed in this is the best in my yeah and those things and I remember she bgvd me one day for a concert she was one of my background vocalists oh. I was playing and I was just like oh. And then oh. I was like a Santi Mungu ni for yeah change. no and 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 honestly it wasn't at your moment for you see it was it's just like how life is wild you can talk down on people and yeah. things like that and you never know but yeah those things are very present in my life mm-hmm. um and I think I I'm very grateful for the fact that I don't think I'm that strong but I think I'm a very strong character some of those things could have affected me way worse than mm-hmm. what they did yeah. yeah so it sounds like you were content but yes. then now other people yeah made me feel like made yeah. you feel like you know maybe mm. I should have more, more. so yeah. what are some of the things that mm. you would do to try and fit in or actually like yeah. before we get into that yeah. some of the type of like systems or groups that you would try and fit into bro so like the especially the two bad boys in school you know how So you know those groups of the young dudes in school mm. who are just every girl wants yeah manzene le kwa na try to fit into those groups na kuna jipata ni kwa bug boy kazi yangu ni kwa bebe a vitu or when they feel like sending someone for something and then i realize kumbe hata hakuna chenye nani if anything i'm even going lower <laughs> the ranks. yeah the ranks man nimeshakuwa mtu wa mkono wa mse um i like as in nilikuwa tunaji i used to from myself to people like and try and endear myself to them and make myself feel like I'm part of the squad when I really was never because yeah. when I, they only wanted me to do errands for them and things like the, uh, that yeah you know carry for me this kama kuna dem flani acha ni bebo jinga and then manzi ali ni fanya ni dani tunapendana kumbe kazi yangu ilikuwa kumbebea tu vitu na kuniibia ma pencil yeah so yeah i think it was i, I genuinely I hate that time in my life. I really really hate that time in my life because I was I wasn't I was never myself. Mm-hmm. You know, um I did things I never normally wouldn't do. Like hata nikaanza tu kwa class clown. Na si class clown ni mfani. I'm even doing some stupid things in class. Like na za ndo ni toy shirt mwalimu akifunza. I just do some random ja, I want people to just notice see me, you, to yeah. notice me. That's all I want. Mm-hmm but the, it it used to do the opposite like it would make people look down on me even more so i never understood and i wasn't i wasn't um and people who i went to high school with would be surprised i wasn't a sporty person um i i never had we didn't have the money so like those were the things i would i could leverage on my side to mm-hmm. to catapult me on the food chain um so like it, i resorted into things that were mimi naambia ni shai kula ta insect kwa class what insect mm. gani nili dariwa stawa show <laughs> yeah, i was there to kula an insect yeah. and for me and people hyped me and hyped me and then i i did it and they were like yak kwa kanza kunita nature boy eh what 
Na nature boy. Na nature boy manze pia unajua ina maanisha mshamba. Yaani nilikapitia manze guys. Nilikapitia deadly. Aki wale kwa nanita hiyo. Wewe unamwambia story ya ule nimetoseka na nicheka. Yaani episode zingine unalia hii yangu unacheka. This is what my childhood was. People like Waboja. This is what they used to do to me. As I express my pain. They laugh at my pain. Yeah. Um despite doing all of these things to try and fit in, yeah. it still sounds like yeah. you know they still were not accepting you. Yeah. So how did that make you feel? No, that made me feel like crap. Mm. Um because I think I got to a point where I realized I'll never fit in with these people. Like regardless of what I do because these things about me that I can never change. Mm-hmm. I can't change where I came from, where I come from. I can't change um my body. Okay, I could, but I didn't know how to change my body then. Yeah. Like basically all the factors were beyond me. And I remember it came to a boiling point. Um one time nilikuwa na chapo na mwalimu class. Aganipiga and I remember I saw blood and I just snapped. I snapped and started crying and, and I threw chairs and desks at the teacher. Yeah. Um and I got expelled. And it was nikiwa primary and went to Gilgil Hills. Like I was just really tired of everything. Yeah. Cuz even as I was being beaten in front of the class, everyone was laughing at me. Mm-hmm. Like you know how when other people were being chapped it was like mm-hmm. oh, yeah. me they were laughing mm-hmm. and I was like you know knew I say what I'm going there so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i just broke and that happened mm-hmm. acha naambia lakini the funniest thing about that story is the teacher that i congat and got for kuzwa for the next yeah when i'm going to the other school nilimpata huko oh hey tough time was yeah. last year <laughs> <laughs> the weekend yeah. never rests yeah but yeah i really that that was my breaking point and i was like yeah. no enough yeah yeah So that's the time that you decide you know what enough yeah. is enough mm. um it's time to turn the tables yeah. i need to you know be different yeah. so what exactly what changes did you have to make in order to yeah. you know i just i just stopped i stopped like and i don't want to say i stopped caring but i stopped i wasn't a kind person anymore i, mm-hmm. I was I think innately I wanted to be kind but like I I couldn't be that person especially when I went to Gilgil Hill. So how Gilgil is it's it's a mixed school but we're separated. Mm-hmm. So there's a boy section and a girl section. The one thing about being in a school full of boys akuna ati unaweza you can't afford even to be soft. Wait, so even during lessons we Yeah, we we have or? separate classes. Oh, like mm-hmm. we only in fact we don't even talk. We only see each other in the dining hall. and they sat on one side and ask guys on the other side. Yo shule, wacha niwaambie, wase wote alienda yo shule wanga makrakens. Yeah. I'm telling you it was so bad. I remember when um what's this school called? Kabarak, they used to say they're not admitting more than two people from that school because guys were just hard-headed, you know. Mm-hmm. So I remember when I went to Gilgil Hills the first time, I really wanted to put my foot down and be like, I'm here. I've arrived. Yeah. So I started picking fights. nikaanza tu kujua nani ndo fast body nani ndo nani so i remember i fought this guy two days after being in that school nilitaka tu kupigana ni wajeshi wa say na msini chapange eh msini chapange wanze spendi kuchapwa and and i think even now that's why i really hate disrespect because i don't get why you just disrespect someone um so i remember i fought this guy and i won mm-hmm. and i remember people were hyping me and that was something new for me like i'd never been in a space where people were like Yeah. You know. And I did it again after like a week because now I was my you know umefura mm. manze nilichapwa. Oh. Kuna mse alinichapa manze na kumbuka tukienda parade na nilikuwa tuna na split na mwaka damu hivi mwalimu anaanza what happened? I'm like I fell. <laughs> Where is it? You know only. <laughs> like yeah. I was bleeding for days but yeah that's that's essentially the turn everything took. Like I just said like this soft person that you people are used to yeah. this is not who I'm going to be anymore I'm going to be this other person and to be to be honest people started respecting me mm-hmm. I was no longer bullied because I was really you know I'm like Santana's kuna msali flash kichwa angu ndani acho you know like for fun 
kuwa bamba si yeah. ati tulikuwa tuna fight aliduku bamba ye na mabeste zake um, and those things never happened when i went to gilgil hills because i was and i became i became those people that i hated yeah you know you know the guys who would pick on other guys and i was still really small if you see my pictures in primary i was still really small but i became the guys who i despised when i was in santana's people who would pick on the smaller guys and everyone else just because they thought they were yeah. better than them um and then now going to gilgil because it's it's a school uko gilgil i mean wasi wako uko pia ni mapank but kama umetoka nairobi yeah pia wasi msi same na msi ametoka na kuru wanaweza kuwa tena more than you but umsi ametoka na kuru yeah una get hivyo tu ndo ilikuwa so i became the people i hated mm-hmm. you know um and to be fair i really loved it for a while mm-hmm. i loved it i loved that i was top of the food chain i loved that people respected me but all of a sudden now when people are getting beat up me niko to up yeah yeah so mm-hmm. yeah and that pushed on even to my high school life as I, i really i i was a very bad person in high school mm-hmm. yeah so um you said that you loved it and yeah. now you're at the point where instead of you know seeking presence like you're yeah. commanding yeah. the presence yeah. you still are now like you know what maybe the exchange was not worth yeah. it why yeah. would you say that and 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 those are the things i i i, I felt then mm-hmm. it's things later on especially after high school because you see i went to a uh, boys high school again i went to nairobi school so pia uko yo that kind of aura and yeah. persona works that's how i survived through high school like i was just honestly high school those four years and i loved them i enjoyed my high school but nilikuwa a devil yeah i don't like, bro these people who, who who watch my music and i see on twitter they're like uyu uyu charisma ni fidel mwenye alikuwa patch mwenye anaimba mariu twice uyu um say alikuwa na you know yeah yeah um so then i didn't know but when i finished school i started to feel like as watch and come easy to by them say feel okay and start to relate na madem we manza shule and then you start to realize this man as i have a bad man as kumbe mm-hmm. yeah people don't like how i am and then i started to think about it and i'm like yeah some of these things that i decided to assimilate into the character that i am now are not proper things you know they are good things and these are things and and let me tell you i have a lot of friends who i finished school with and even primary when you work on matagi ama wase watu wako to life ya ma drugs na vitu kama hizo yeah so i just i started to realize after school that hey, this this is not yeah. it you know like this life is the kind of person that i am is not it and and i struggled even when i when i got into relationships i struggled with them heavily because I couldn't I didn't know how to express myself to my partner mm-hmm. and they, and let me tell you if there's something ladies don't like is someone who doesn't express them like you don't know what to say I was always like sour mm-hmm. and then I malaised at that and that's something I struggled with even up to now like I think I've become better but the things like those really hampered like my growth um early on yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you say that your parents prayers basically saved your life honestly in, yeah. in what ways did they because i genuinely don't see how else i'm here yeah i i'm being very honest because the the people i kept around me um the type of person that i was everything i was doing guys like honestly everything about me would not have led me here yeah it's just the truth about everything like i i wasn't i'm not the type of person i wasn't meant to be here at this point in time but i'm here and so that's as wild for me and i think yeah. the only thing that i would attribute it to is my parents prayers like there's really nothing else that i've done different from the other people i was with who are on a different path mm-hmm. um that got me here you know okay, so now you're older yes. and you realize that you know all these extra extra things were unnecessary yes. and you were maybe you know just focused on the wrong people mm-hmm. and all this time there were mm. other people who loved you and yeah. were rooting for you yeah. so apart from your parents yeah. and maybe finesse yeah. <laughs> what other people would you say you know were there to waraling behind um, you i think i had a lot of friends and i didn't realize it mm-hmm. um and i think ever, even at an older age for the longest time i really took for granted my friends mm-hmm. um 
took for granted in the sense that not not like at the, I wouldn't hang with them and it's just whenever I felt something I'd never talk to anyone you know um, so I just got to a point where I realized there's actually people in my life that I can talk to um, and they won't judge me and they'll understand me and try to even if not help we won't sort the situation they'll they'll work with me during that time and honestly the the most important people for me in that stage were my family mm-hmm. I won't lie because um, I've always been an extrovert, but I, I, I always struggle to connect with people, mm. which is a weird thing to say. You know, it's very difficult to say that you're an extrovert, but you struggle to connect with people. But that happened for me. Um, so really the people that I was close to, especially when younger, was my family. And I, I've, I've always been very open with my, my dad, my mom, um, and my bro. So my bro is only one, one year younger than me. So us guys are literally age mates. Yeah. So we've we've always been like really close friends um yeah so i I guess those people were close to me and then now growing older um these friends that i made who've been my friends for the past like and the people you've seen me with um um have been friends of mine for like 13 14 15 years Um, so those guys just meeting people like that who who made me understand that it's okay to be myself um and people who've also been patient with me with understanding some of the harmful traits that I had acquired mm-hmm. um, and helping me grow through some of those traits, you know, and being patient with me. I think those those people were, have been very integral to me. Yeah. yeah. And I know you say that, you know, you wouldn't change anything because yeah. at the end of the day, yeah, it made you me, who yeah. you are, yeah. yeah? But I know if you could save someone, you know, yeah. all that trouble that you've yeah, gone yeah, through, you sure. definitely would. So what yeah. would you say to maybe a young boy or yeah. girl? Man, like, that's, I think that's one of the most important things. Even as a musician, I keep telling guys, people who come after me don't have to go through the same struggle I've gone through. Mm-hmm. Same way I don't believe I have to go through being struggle. See, last month, it's like, do you have many years? I don't know if you can help me. Like, if there's mm-hmm. a way Ben can help me, he'll help me, you know. Um, so one thing I just said, like, everyone growing up, just and, and at that stage, just... Just be you and be content with being you. Um, sometimes it feels like there's actually nowhere to go. You you feel lost. You feel like you're in a place in the world. Um, you can't find yourself and everything. But just be yourself. Really just be you and be content with it. As long as it's working for you, it doesn't have to work for everyone else. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing I think you learn as you get older. Like You're not for everyone. You know? I think as I got older, I used to keep a lot of friends. My Nilukwangana friends come at 7 million. Mm. But as I grew older, like my circle became so small to a point where my close friends are like five people mm. or three people, four or five people. You know, um, you start to understand you can't be for everyone. You can't please everyone. Yeah. Um, so just be yourself. Don't worry about what everyone else says about you as long as you're true to yourself. Uh, and you're working every day to improve yourself in a way that's pleasing to you. It doesn't it doesn't have to please everyone else. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing for me at this age, at, at this point in time. And that's one thing I would say to everyone. And that's it, something I'm working on right now, even. Yeah. Uh, like just growing as Fidel as a person, you know, um, and not caring about what everyone else thinks that I should be, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now present day Fidel. Yeah. Who would you say Fidel is at the core? You know, what comes yeah. naturally to you without, you know, outside yeah. pressure, opinions? Yeah, so first of all, I'm very loud. Um, I'm a loud person. I'm a happy person. I'm bubbly. Um, I think I can be kind, but I'm very, I like, it depends. I'm, I'm a very introspective person for myself and mm-hmm. also for situations. So like, I'll always be honest with people about everything. I don't know how to sugarcoat things and nini, so I'll always see things as they are. Mm-hmm. That uh, is very true. Yeah. Actually, Niki Juani Mekosea, yeah. Yeah, because, because you will tell me the yeah, truth. No, I'll just be honest with you. Like, yeah. and, and I think that's one thing, that's another thing I really hit, I struggled with when I was younger because I always wanted to say what I felt, but I was always like, ah, what's that on your energy? But these days I don't struggle with that. And I'm like, I'll give, I'll tell you what I think and the rest is up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm that type of person. Um, I think I'm very protective. Um, yeah, I'm super, super protective. Uh, I allow myself to feel things. 
I don't think I'm at my, I've, I've reached where I should be mm-hmm. in terms of like just being vulnerable and accepting of uh, how I feel and how I react towards how I feel. But I think I'm in a much, much better place. Uh, some of the bad habits, bro, I struggled with toxic masculinity. Yeah. I really struggled with toxic masculinity and there's still a lot of traces of it now. Um, but I feel like I'm dealing with a lot of things and feeling. Me watch an ambe kitambo watch an ilikuwa na namu na me me ba pink national upsi. Yeah. Na squeezy me don't do this stuff. So like I've 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 embraced who I am. Um, I've embraced myself as a person. I'm confident in my manhood, and I think that's one of the most amazing things that that happened to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So what are some of the things that you struggled mm. with at 12 years old yeah. that you can say you're still struggling with struggling with to date? Yeah. Um, I think the vulnerability, but not as much. Um, I think I'm at a way better place. I think there's sometimes that I'll try to please people. Like, mm-hmm. I don't like disappointing people. Um, yeah, so I could end up being a people pleaser at times. Um, the good thing with me is I catch myself. Like, I'll be like, I you know, understand. But there's moments, like, I really don't like disappointing people. So, like, mm-hmm. I'll just go along with the flow sometimes. Um, what else? What do I think? I think I'm very content with my life, so I don't think that's a problem. Yeah, I think essentially that. Like, yeah. I, 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 be, I believe I'm very comfortable in who I am and with mm-hmm. what I have. Um, and I've gotten past a lot of the um, trying to look for acceptance from people, you know. So I think essentially, yeah, I think the biggest one might be the vulnerability, but that's, yeah. that's much, much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, present day Fidel does mm. sound like you are very proud of where you come yes. from and you're also very, you know, um, appreciative of yeah. your parents and the things yeah. they did for you. Yeah, because they d- <laughs> even even in school, I got suspended a couple, a couple of times, yeah. Mm-hmm. When I was getting suspended, I remember. So, like, we used to, you know, how when you're about, okay, I don't know if you know, <laughs> but when I you're don't. about to get suspended, <laughs> like, you're normally sat outside the administration and you see how other parents are dealing with their kids and talking to their kids. And then I see how my parents are talking to me, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. And yeah, my parents love me in a way that doesn't make sense. Because that's what it was in Guinea, I suspend you for. Yeah. You know, so like they've really supported me. Um and my dad is a pastor. Um, but he's one of my biggest fans. Uh like my dad listens to my music religiously. My bro was telling me the other day it was like midnight in the sitting room, then they're asleep, they're like, see nah, no 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 I got you no man say say but you know, so my dad supports me crazy. I posted something on Twitter that the guys really liked. Um, just showing people how they were talking about like post something to show a present father and I was showing them like just the words my dad speaks into my life, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, the way my mom has my mom has just been a rock for me. She's she's literally like my best friend. Like we'll talk about anything and everything to uh, heartbreaks, like we'll mm-hmm. we'll talk about everything. And so I don't take them for granted. And I think those are things that help me appreciate where I come from. Like mm-hmm. I was I've always just been like we might not have this at home, but this thing that my parents give me and give me with everything they have, yeah. you can never, you can, I can never get that anywhere else. So it really helped me just appreciate where I'm from. Um, and my brother is a uh, man. You'll always see my bro frontline at my shows. Yeah. Every sh- every single show, um, he'll always just be there for me. There's a time I. I was in hospital for a while. Kuna time I live in Jambavu. My brother was there the whole time. Ali kwa na job, but I na fanya job apa. You know, so like they've made me. And I, yes, I used. To, I, I'm very, I've always been very content about it, but they've also made it very easy to be content about, yeah. about where I come from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it also sounds like yeah. young Fidel is yeah. very proud of present day Fidel because yes. he wanted to be a star and here you are, you know, living, breathing, yeah. superstar. Yeah. I've seen the crowds that you pull. Yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah. You know, but like, so growing up, I never had a talent. Mm-hmm. I could not act, I could not sing. So the one thing, and like dudes who grew up in my generation know, wrestling was a big thing. Mm-hmm. So I used to tell people I'll, I'll become an entertainer and my mom would be like, but how do you find it? This is how to yeah. and I'll be a wrestler. So that was always my goal. I was like, because I can't do anything else, I'll be mm-hmm. a wrestler. And I, I remember, um, so when I got into high school, I played rugby and I played rugby at a very high level. 
and I thought I was going to be a rugby player and then I broke my collarbone. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, god damn. Now I found something that I could do and become a superstar. Now it's gone. Yeah. And then I just stumbled on singing and I started singing and it's happened for me and I know I know if if 12 year old me would be would get a screen and just watch what I've become, they'd absolutely love it to see the energy the charisma or everything i bring to the table they'd be elated and be like yes that's my hero so yeah so for me honestly and, and that's why i tell people every single day i'm living my dream i've I, was it, i remember when i was um dropping everything about now being a lawyer people were like yeah no man that's like someone who kill your love and chill stuff and i'm like it's because i really enjoy what i what i do and mm-hmm. i wasn't making money off it at yeah. that point but i just really really enjoyed being being a musician and i love that i stuck with it because i can't see myself doing anything else mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> it's so funny because a lot yeah. of people who yeah. are like into yeah. music yeah. usually start singing from like a very young yeah. age so sure. for you what happened ulka tu so to go to concert at church and i was the head director and was at Nairobi Baptist mm-hmm. i was head director for that concert so what happened um you know how young boys are when they're going to be in my day yeah. and before I was one of those guys uh, so the because I was head director the pastor called me and is like you know Fidel a lot of these kids look up to you mm-hmm. um, so we want you to come and just sing so that we can all na imba what are come manzele can be home say manzi miss you kuimba mna manisha nini nianze tu kuimba um so I went there And then this guy is in, you know when you're told to go and hype people it's just be there. Yeah. Also okay no gonna be a soul of us. <laughs> so I go and look at the lyrics. I'm trying to sing this song with my effort and I'm just like oh no. This is not gonna happen. Yeah. But we practice and practice and practice and ultimately I ended up singing the lead uh, vocals for that song. Um I remember it was Dietrich Cardon what's the name Stand still. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't I, I mean it was ter- it wasn't good it wasn't terrible but yeah. it was just uh, like mm-hmm. no one would have ever thought like this guy would end up being a musician. Yeah. I remember when I started singing even that day everyone in church was like Allah oh, uh-huh. you know you know you hear mamas he sing, he sings. Yeah so that's how it started like I was actually just pushed into singing and then there was this group uh, called Singers of Christian Songs walikuwa na jita socks. Mm-hmm. They used to do a cappella. I was going to my dad. So I started going for their practices and then we practiced together for a while and ultimately we became a band. And literally that's how my music career began. I was literally the the weakest singer in the group because I couldn't sing for 20 minutes without my voice but yeah. And then so mainly as I do by chance. Like I really stumbled on it by chance. Kama siku ambi wendo hype or say singer why do. Yeah, yeah. This is how I normally say sometimes yeah. some things you're just really yeah. meant to do them. Yeah, they're just for you. Yeah, the universe yeah. forces you, you into them. That space. In fact, mm-hmm. I used to act. Yeah. So I was like when I started doing art, I acted most most of my time. So even uh, when we're doing the video for number one, people ask me a lot of times mli patana jina pascal i'm like ask guys just to patana drama all the time in mm-hmm. high school yeah so that's literally where we met from so singing was never a thing i saw myself doing mm-hmm. it was, and i mean to look at name mangala church kuna family gathering mimi mtoto wa pastor lazima tuje imbango mambili tatu but it was never a thing i'd like i'd be like yeah this is yeah Mm-hmm. So what is next for Fidel? What should we look out for? Man, I don't know. Honestly, life has been surprising me. Mm-hmm. The thing about my life is every time it just surprises me and I keep getting to levels I don't understand. Even when something feels like it's a challenge, it becomes a win. Um ultimately because and I think I built resilience because of going through so much. I've gone through a lot in my life, just things that have beat me down. So they've helped me become a very resilient person. Um but I think what's next is person so one thing is I really I want to grow as a person. Mm-hmm. Um I think growth as a person has really helped me to also get to where I am because I'm more focused. I think about people other people uh, a bit more than before and things like that. So like growing as a person is the most important thing. I really want to build my relationship with my my family my friends um and then of course career like i would love me i want to fill stadiums i tell people my, one of my biggest dream is to do a show at in kakamega mm-hmm. at a stadium called bukungu stadium like i just want people to travel from nairobi mombasa around the world to come to where, yeah, where to my shags 
and we, I do a concert there, 20,000 people, 30,000. Like, I wanna, every time I watch Banner Boy, I'm always like, this, this is what I wanna yeah. do, you know? Like, I wanna stand in front of men and women and just do, like, show them this talent that God gave me, you know? And, and express myself and, and make a lot of money from it mm-hmm. because I like money yeah. and I like good things. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, I just, I wanna take this, um, our industry to the next level and not just myself but i also another goal for me is always to go with people like um if there is the Ethans, the kenotis the motorias they mm. like we're moving together yeah. where kenya just becomes a force you know so that's really my goal mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I love it, and I really do believe that yeah. you will make it because you are a performer. Yeah, Thank you. I go yeah. for all all the performances. Yeah, yeah, yeah she does. And that yeah, yeah it's a good time. Yeah, it's <laughs> a big deal. <laughs> okay, so yeah. we've had uh, yeah. you talk to your younger self, yeah. and we normally do a time capsule sort of thing okay. where now you're going to leave a letter to or rather a message oh, wow. to Fidel ten years from now yeah. so you can take a second yeah. um, oh, think about what you'd like to say to your future self okay. and then whenever you're ready you can yeah. go to that camera okay. 10 years from now dear very old Fidel you're now a Baba for real hey yak also but yeah um, just be content uh, keep being content uh, keep expanding your territories and be rich. You better be rich because I'm not about to suffer again. Um, I hope you continue being a respectful person to everybody. I hope you take care of your family um, and you're, you're the man that you want to be. Um, I, I hope you become a better man, a man who protects the people around him. If you're married, if, big if, uh, I hope you're taking care of your family, um, your children, I hope you're there for them. Yeah, man, I just hope you're a better person overall. And you're filling stadiums, you know. I hope you're standing on bigger stages than I am now. Um, And even as people are shouting your name, you still stay grounded. Yes. That's that's a very sweet interpretation. Ten years from now, Uh, I I send you the message. Um, other than that, I think it's been a lovely show. I always say that men are the only ones yeah. who end their letter with I love you. And yet again, yeah. <laughs> I'm I love you. Like literally, it's only men who end their letters with oh, really? I love you. Yeah. That's odd. I love you. I'm proud oh. of you. It's the guys. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But thank you so much for Thank gracing the Russia. podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. And for the guys back at home, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.